بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to another episode of your weekly Islamic chat show Guest of the Week coming to you from Sharjah TV As always I'm your host Ismail Buluk and today we have uh, another inshallah interesting topic We want to talk about the ways of you could say protecting yourself or avoiding the anger and punishment of Allah because we know of course we always like to talk about how Allah is of course Allah is his and his mercy as we're probably going to touch upon way over exceeds his anger but at the same time we have to realize that if we make mistakes and we don't repent we can be punished for those mistakes so to discuss that with me inshallah uh, again to the show is Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan assalamu alaikum Khair for coming on. Now, as I mentioned to the viewers, of course, and uh, for, for valid reasons, we talk about the rahmah of Allah and Allah's forgiveness. Because as I mentioned, and there's so many evidence we can talk about there, that his mercy exceeds his anger. But just the fact that that statement is there shows us that there is an element where Allah can be angry with us or we can, ups, you know, we can be on not the bad side of Allah. But you see what I mean as we say in English, we can... Uh, put ourselves in trouble, we could put ourselves uh, open to punishment. So we, today we want to try and talk about ways uh, that we can avoid that, ways that we can protect ourselves from that, ways that we can do our very best to stay away from being in that kind of position. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawmi deen amma ba'ad. First of all, when we look at the Qur'an and the Sunnah, we find that when Allah wa Taala speaks about the righteous creation in which He created, and the reason why I said creation is because the angels are also from the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala spoke about the angels, Allah says about them, "Yakhafuna Rabbahum min fawqihim," that they fear their Lord from high above. Allah also says about the ibadul Rahman, the ibad, the slaves who are righteous. He says, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ The believers and the angels are scared. تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا they ask questions. How did you enter Jannah? What did you do? And then look what Allah says. When we were with our families and we were in the world, we were scared. And because of that, Allah protected us from the hellfire. Allah protected us from the punishment of the day of judgment. Allah protected us from all of that. So what you tend to find in the Quran is the righteous people are always scared and they are hopeful of Allah. Hatta even the prophets. In Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَحَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ They worship us, the, uh, the prophets, with hope, and they worship us with fear. When this leaves the heart of a believer, it becomes a problem. I remember now that, subhanAllah, the ayah, I'm sure, inshallah, you'll be able to refresh my memory. The ayah slipped my mind, but there was a particular ayah that refers to uh, the people who uh, afraid uh, this particular ayah really slipped my mind subhanAllah but uh, when Aisha radiallahu she asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about this ayah mm -hmm. she said are these the sinful people and he said no these are actually the righteous people but they're scared that their deeds will not be accepted it's true it's the ayah Allah tabarak surah al-araf Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says prior to the ayah so if we understand the context it gives us a great understanding which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he says وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِرَبِّهِمْ لَا يُشْرِكُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيَرَاتِ وَهُمْ لَهَا سَابِقُونَ The hadith is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi in his sunan من حديث عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها and Shaykh Nasir رحمه الله authenticated in Sahih al-Sunan Tirmidhi hadith 3401 that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم she said to him when the Prophet recited the ayah she said Ya Rasulullah أهم الذين يشربون الخمر are they the ones who drink drink خمر ويسرقون are they the ones who steal and then he said لا يا بنت الصديق no the daughter of Abu Bakr no but rather who are they الذين يصلون 
They are the ones who fast. They are the ones who pray. And they are the ones who give. Like in, they are scared. They are scared that it will not be accepted from them. And I believe the, I believe the, the correct translation of that part of the verse about their hearts is their hearts tremble. So you can understand to some uh, some aspect that Aisha radiallahu anha, she naturally thought these must be the guys who are doing big sins, you it's know. True. That's why they're trembling because they've done, they've stolen or they've fornicated or they've done all these things. But they, subhanAllah, they it scared. turns out that these are the people who have the level of their um, taqwa, That's that right. they have this true understanding of Allah and this true uh, fear and in knowing that, you know, ultimately, no matter how m much we do, ultimately, we do our best, but it is... We rely on the, the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just do, we do the, we do the asbab as they say. We take the steps required Sahih. to, inshallah, gain that mercy. But ultimately, it's in the hands of Allah. Damn. Also in another ayah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلِيهِمْ آيَاتُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَلُونَ So you can see they're, they're scared. But they're not only scared, they've come with righteous deeds. You see. Uh, the ayah went, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتُوا Before that Allah تبارك وتعالى He says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ They believe in the verses of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ بِرَبِّهِمْ لَا يُشْرِكُونَ They don't associate partners with Allah. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتُوا They come with everything that they come with, but they're still scared. Subhanahu. What are they scared of? أَلَّا يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْهُمْ That this will not be scared of them, it will not be accepted from them. So this is vital. This characteristic is very noble. That when a person does righteous deeds, he fasts, he prays, he connects himself with Allah Azza wa Jal. He's still scared that I don't think this will be accepted from him. And uh, would it be taken in by Allah Azza wa Jal? I think it, it's important as well to, to point out to the viewers because some viewers may be thinking, you know, well, you know, SubhanAllah, I do all these good deeds, why should I be afraid? Mm -hmm. It's actually a lesson for us not to be, com to be complacent because we can think we've reached a certain level and I'm doing so many good deeds and then you can just think I've made it. So this always, it always keeps you on your feet or it should always keep us on our feet, always knowing that we're never, you know, al mm -hmm. you know, perfection is, 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 is Allah, ascribed okay. to Allah, not to us. So we've always got to keep on striving, keep on improving. That's no, true. but I don't think anybody can confidently say, I don't need to improve in anything. It's so true. It, it's, ama it's so amazing because look at Nabi Allah Muhammad, you know, Qiyamul Layl, he prays. He's a prophet of Allah. He's forgiven for all of his sins. Uh, Allah forgave him for all his sins. He prays at night. He's praying until his, until his legs are swollen. And guess what he starts his Qiyamul Layl with? He says, Allah, He says, Allahumma fatir as samawati wal ard, alim al ghaybi wa shahada, anta tahkum bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fi hi akhtalifun. Ihdini. Ihdini li makhtulif fi hi min al haqi bi idni. Inna ka tahdi man tashaw ila sirat al mustaqim. He's scared. He's asking Allah to guide him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah to keep him on the straight path. Nabiullah Muhammad is asking. Nabiullah Ibrahim, as he, you know, before you know, he became a prophet, young age, he destroyed idols. When he grew older and he became a prophet, what did he say? He said, Rabbana, uh, Rabbi Jinubini wa Baniya and al Asna. You know, Allah protect me and my children from worshiping what? Idols? He didn't say shirk. Ibn al Qayyim said he didn't say shirk. Because shirk comes in different forms. He said the most common, the most well-known form of shirk, Allah protecting me from it. He knows that if Allah wills that he can throw him in it. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam increase in the dua, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya muqallib al-qulubi thabit qalbi ala deenik. Like just increasing in this dua. And she said, ya Rasulullah, are you scared? Are you scared? Is that why you make this dua a lot? And he said, why would I not be scared? Al-qulubu bayna usbu'ayni min asabi al-rahmani yuqallibu ha kifi al-shari. You know, the fingers are between the two hearts of Allah, the, the, heart, the hearts of the creation are between the two fingers of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah tosses and He turns it the way He wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this characteristics of not feeling safe and secure from the punishment of Allah is, is, is something that one needs to see and work, work with. And you know why many people actually fall into this, in which they feel secure and they feel like, you know what, actually, I'm not doing bad is when Allah gives them the dunya. When Allah gives you the dunya, and you know you're sinning, you actually think what you're doing is not wrong. Even though you're doing so many sins, you actually think what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with it. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامَ أَحْمَدْ narrated in his musnad مِنْ حَدِيثَ عُقْبَةُ بْنَ عَامِرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهُ That the Prophet ﷺ, he said, 
إذا رأيت الله يعطي العبد من الدنيا على معاصيه If you see Allah تبارك وتعالى giving a person his dunya whilst he is sinning whilst he is sinning ما يحب أن he's giving that person what he loves فعلم أنه استدراج Know that this person Allah wants to grab him سنستدرجهم من حيث لا يعلمون وأملي لهم إن كيدي متين Allah is going to grab this person and he's going to destroy them ولذلك when the Prophet said that صلى الله عليه وسلم what did the Prophet recite? فل- this ayah فلما نسوا ما ذكروا به فتحنا عليهم أبواب كل شيء أبواب كل شيء حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا أخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون All of the doors were open for them The whole dunya was given to them And they were told to enjoy it And guess what? They were sinning And they really didn't understand That what they were getting was, a, was, a, was the time for Allah تبارك وتعالى Wanting to destroy them سبحانه وتعالى So this is where the believer He worries I'm sinning And I'm getting all of this being given something in this dunya doesn't mean Allah loves you. When Allah gives you something in this dunya, it doesn't really mean He loves you. Because Allah gives this dunya to who He loves and Allah gives it to who He doesn't love. Allah gave it to Qarun. إِنَّ قَارُونَ كَانَ مِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَى فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَتَنُوءُ بِالْعُصْبَةِ إِلُوا الْقُوَّةِ Allah gave it to Qarun. Allah gave it to وَتُلْ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَقَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَتْرُكُهُ يَلْهَثْ إِلَى آخِرِ الْآيَةِ Allah gives the dunya to you. In another ayah Allah says وَلَوْ لَعِنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَا يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ وَلِبُيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابٌ وَصُورٌ عَلَيْهَا يَتَّكِئُونَ وَزُخْرُفًا وَإِن كُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The akhirah is the one that when Allah gives you he loves you so just because Allah gave you something in this world, it doesn't mean what you're doing, the sins that you're doing, and the crimes that you're committing, that it's all right, there's nothing wrong with it. And don't feel so secure and safe. This is, this is reason why many people feel that way. And we, and we know the reality is that, the, like you said, Allah gives wealth to whom he loves and whom he doesn't love, but whereas he only gives hadaya, guidance, to those who he loves. So this is the ultimate richness this is the ultimate gift this is the ultimate treasure really it's true not the not the not the money i mean I, even subhanallah i remember umar radiallahu anhu even as he was dying after he'd been stabbed he asked that they put his head uh, on the floor yeah. on the floor because he wanted to uh, he was worried you could say scared for, for lack of better words and he wanted to leave this world in worship so that kind of again shows us if they were like this then what should we be like? We should be more, we should on a daily basis should be kind of reflecting upon that and trying to, trying to correct our ways. What's actually amazing is that in the tarjama of Umar radiallahu anhu, when, they, when he told them to put his face on the floor uh, and not to refer to him as Amir al muminin the reason why he said that was because he felt that he didn't finish the Salatul Fajr that he was leading because he got, he oh. got, you know, he got stri- stricken whilst he was in the Salah by Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. And so he never finished off the Salah. They say he was either reading Surah to Yusuf or Surah to Ra'd when he got hit from the back. So he never finished the Salah. And he said, La hadda lil Islam. There's no place for a person. Liman taraka salah. The one who left the prayer, there's no place for him in Islam. He's, but he never left it intentionally. You know, he, mm. he, he got Had sahab. no choice, but he still had that khashya and that fear. That kind of hirs, that kind of. Uh, was, uh, and exactly, history. like the striving to for the prayer, etc. It's so oh. true, and that's the quality that I think many of us, especially nowadays, when we do little khair, we just do a little bit of good. Automatically, we think that you know we're qualified to uh, to uh, to feel that. Mashallah, Allah has accepted it, and Allah is happy with us, and we're doing good. I'll just hold you on that point, inshallah, and we'll just take our first break. Join us, inshallah, after this short break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Now obviously, we went, you know, before the first part of the show, we spoke so much about this uh, n- not feeling safe, for lack of better words, in the sense of not getting complacent and saying, you know, I've made it. I do so many good deeds. I've got nothing to worry about. I just, I don't even need to improve, mashallah. 
you know, we, 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 we gave so many examples. So, so I guess for those people who maybe have become complacent or they feel that they've made it and there's nothing more to be done, how can we try and, what can we say to persuade them and show them that this is not the case and we need to keep on striving and we need to, if what we haven't already told them, what kind of steps can we give them for this? There's an ayah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهَلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقُوا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَى أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ أَوْ أَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَى أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا ضُحًى وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ In this ayah Allah gives us the answer to that question of yours which is وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقُوا The person needs to come with two qualities إِيمَانُ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ To really believe in Allah ظَاهِرًا وَبَاطِنًا And the person needs to take a taqwa which is piety that the person needs to come with الْخَوْفُ مِنَ الْجَلِيلِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ وَالْرِضَى بِالْقَلِيلِ وَاسْتِعْدَادُ الْيَوْمِ الرَّحِيلِ As Ali ibn Abi Talib said الْخَوْفُ مِنَ الْجَلِيلِ You need to fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ Act upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah Because the Qur'an is a revelation from Allah and so is the Sunnah فَالسُنَّةُ النَّبِيِّ وَحْيٌ ثَانٍ عَلَيْهِمَا قَدْ أُطْلِقَ الْوَحْيَانِ The Sunnah is a second type of revelation وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ وَالْرِضَى بِالْقَلِيلِ To be happy with the little Allah gives you A lot of people who are A lot of people who actually have الْأَمْلُ مِنْ مَكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ What is the problem? That whatever is given to them is what they, they evaluate the, the closeness to Allah wa ta'ala based on their worldly on their worldly gain and I've spoken about that and that doesn't mean anything Qarun Allah gave him the dunya Fir'aun Allah gave him the dunya Allah gives dunya to non-believers and Muslims Allah gives it to righteous people Allah gives it to non-righteous people gives it to everyone that doesn't show anything imagine the, of the verse no. you know, he, he provides whatever he, whatever he wants without a count like you can't count it so there's, like you mentioned, everybody can receive this verse. This is not evidence of your piety or That's of true. your status uh, with Allah or your status in the, in the in hereafter. It's true. And Ali and Abi Talib concluded by saying, وَاسْتِعْدَادُ الْيَوْمِ الرَّحِيلِ Preparing for the day of judgment. How could you think you're safe and feel security when you haven't died yet? Because to be honest, it doesn't matter all the good that you were doing all your life. What really matters is, as the Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ 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 what really matters is that last moment. That's what really counts. And then look what the Prophet حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق على الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها. You can be doing good all your life, but that last moment you turn on your heels, and guess what? You do the opposite of what you were doing all your life. So that's fear, that's scared, that should make you not feel safe and not secure. You see, and that's why استعداد اليوم الرحيل preparation for the day of judgment. Four of those points that Ali ibn Abi Talib said: الخوف من الجليل Fearing Allah, والعمل بالتنزيل, living by the Quran and the Sunnah, you know, والرضا بالقليل, being happy with the little Allah gave you. Stop looking at the big things that this dunya contains, and the fourth one, which is استعداد اليوم الرحيل, prepare for that day which you will depart. It's it's amazing because والله, just recently on social media, two young girls, 19 and another, very young girls, are up in America. Oh yeah, it just disappeared. That's it. They were disappeared. They got found. Yeah, the body was found in a car. Nineteen and twenty. They just graduated. They just graduated. Their graduation mm-hmm. pictures. You, you'll see it. It just shows you that when death is coming, it doesn't care how old you are. It doesn't care what age you are. It doesn't care what background you are. It doesn't matter how much children you have, how much wealth you have. Really, when it comes, it comes. I mean, go back to the hadith you mentioned. Um, uh, translation of the last part. It, it just points out what we're trying to say is that you always have to keep working and keep doing your best because as it says that, that somebody he'll be you know he will be doing good work all his life until he's just 
almost like an arm's length away from entering paradise. But it, what's written for him will overcome him and he will be of those of the hellfire. And there'll be another person who's done all these deeds, like he's a hand's span or arm span away from the hellfire. Mm -hmm. And then likewise, it, what's written for him overcomes him and he goes to Jannah. So this shows us, we don't know. Many people, again, they think... I am good now. They just so stop at a certain stage of all my life. Or we have the opposite, which was a, some, something common I used to experience uh, back home. Uh, is a lot of the guys when I used to, after becoming Muslim, I used to tell them, come and pray, come on. When I was at school, I would end up praying by myself. And I'd have my the, the Muslim friends who I initially saw, who they prayed now and again. And I would say to them, let's go and pray Dhuhr. Oh, we have to go to the canteen. Let's pray Asr, we're going to miss the bus. So I would be the one who's very alien to Islam in the sense I've just become a Muslim, but I'd be praying by myself in the classroom and there's people been knocking on the windows laughing and so it was, but they had that idea of, oh, oh yeah, I know I should pray. When I get to 40 years old, do I don't that. know what it's about 40, but they kept saying 40, is it some weak hadith they have or something? I don't know, but some cultural thing, but they always used to use the number 40. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm 40, I'll, be, I'll become a good Muslim, I'll pray, I'll grow a beard, I'll, I'll do this and do that. And who says you're gonna live to 40? I remember, Around that same kind of time, he wasn't a Muslim, but uh, a, one of our fellow students died in a car crash. Inna wa inna you know, and he was with us in the class every day and he was gone. And this was around the same time that they're saying to me, when we're 40. We'll so how do you know you'll even live that long? SubhanAllah. Why take that risk? It's funny because I came across a beneficial point the other day, which is Allah Ta'ala, he says, Fastaqib kama umirta. Be steadfast the way you were commanded. To be steadfast is not how we determine what steadfastness is. No. Allah tells us how to be steadfast. And when to be steadfast. And where to be steadfast. And what steadfastness means. And the reality of it. That's why you hear today many people who, who say, oh, leave me alone. Why are you all up in my business for? I, I'm practicing. My heart is good. You know, I'm steadfast in my own little way. I'm doing my thing. But steadfastness is it's not how you perceive it. Or it's not how I perceive it. Steadfastness is what the Quran and Sunnah mention. Fastaqim kama umirta. Allah is telling the Prophet, be steadfast the way you were commanded, the way, the way that you were told. Not the way you want to, Muhammad, and not the way that your companions want. No, the way you're commanded and the way that you're told. And that goes to, as the scholars they say, that al ibrata bi umumi lafti la bi khususi sabab. Even that the Prophet is the one that's been spoken to here, it's not restricted to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's everybody. So each and every one of us have to be steadfast. And upright the way Allah Taala told us, and not to find in our hearts, uh, you know, al amlu min makrillah. It's funny because this ayah, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ. This ayah, the uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, when he brings it, he brings the call of two great scholars, Hassan al Basri and Qatada. You see. The first one, Hassan al-Basri, he said, if you see a person who, wherever Allah has given them, has pleased them, and so they thought there's nothing to worry about, I'm, I'm safe, you know, I'm safe, there's nothing I need to worry about, then uh, Hassan al-Basri said, فَلَا رَأْيَ لَهُ This person has no idea what he's talking about. This is not a person you should even ever refer back to. فَلَا رَأْيَ لَهُ He has no opinions. He doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't even know the reality in front of him. You see? Also, Al Imam Abi Qatada, he said, Rahim al Qatada ibn Da'abat al Sadusi, he said that a people transgressed against Allah wa Ta'ala's command and they went against them. They went against Allah's command, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then Allah wa Ta'ala opened all doors for them. And so they thought to themselves that this is it. But did they not know that Allah wa Ta'ala destroys a person at the times when they're most heedless? Because remember the ayah that I read before. What did Allah wa Ta'ala say? So these are two times when the people are heedless. So sleeping and playing. Basically. Do you not know Allah's punishment to come to you at that, those times? When you're heedless, you don't know. And then Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, makra Allah. Are they safe from the plans of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala? Allah says, فَلَا يَأْمَنُ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ The only people who find safety from the plans of Allah and feel that they're secure, there's nothing to worry about. Allah says, إِلَّا الْخَاسِرُونَ Who are the khasirun? The ones Allah mentioned in Wal-Asr. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ 
that person is in a state of loss. There's nothing to wait for. They're destroyed now. SubhanAllah. So, SubhanAllah, it's a very, very deep topic. But I mean, so we've mentioned so many things. How can then, what more can we say to them in the sense of, because you, you, we, we've said so much, so much advice on feeling safe from the plans of Allah. But then what do we say for those people who keep, one of the big things, of course, like many issues, is people falling into sins. So I guess we could, we could spend the, the, the last part of this, pro this section of this program and the following section talking about the danger of sins. Because no doubt, if, if you're sinning and your sins are overcoming you or controlling you to some extent, then you're not going to be able to... Uh, you're not going to be able to reach the status that you're supposed to. So we want to focus, I guess, a bit on staying away from the from from sins, which are going to give you some time. Even that can someone might say that they're, they're sinning, but they still feel complacent. That's true. Sometimes that is that itself can be a result of sins. Even though you'd think to yourself, how can he feel complacent? He's okay because he's sinning. But then he'll say, well, you know, I'm sinning. I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm also doing all this good. So inshallah, I'm okay because I have goodness in me, and he kind of makes excuses himself for these sins that he's falling into. Abdul Razak ibn Hamam al-Sanaani in his Musannaf, he narrated Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was asked, and Ibn Kathir, he mentioned that this athar is sahih mawkufan wa la yasihu marfu'an. Ibn Kathir mentions it in his, in his tafsir. But Abdul Razak ibn Hamam al-Sanaani narrated this from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. When he was asked about su'il an akbar al-kaba'ir, he was asked about the major sins, what are they? And he said, al-ishraku billah. And what did he also say? He said, وَالْأَمْنُ مِنْ مَكْرِ اللَّهِ To find safety from the punishment of Allah. He said this is one of the major sins. And he mentioned it after what? He mentioned it after shirk billah, al-ishraq billah. To do shirk and associate partners with Allah. Straight after Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, what did he mention? He mentioned that uh, the person has uh, the feeling in his heart or her heart that she's safe and there's nothing to worry about. You see, some, there's actually a debate amongst the scholars whether there are major and minor sins, or can sins even be divided into major and minor? Why? Because they said, لا تنظر إلى المعصية Don't look at the sin. ولكن ننظر إلى من عصيت Look at who you're disobeying. Oh. Look how, just put aside what you're doing. But look at who you're disrespecting, who you're going against. And even on the flip side of that, they, you know, the scholars have also said that there's, there's, there's no minor sin upon re re repetition, repetition of it. Ah. So if you keep doing a minor sin, can regularly becomes a major sin. So, so whatever way you look at it, uh -huh. you know, you need to... It's true. You're going back to a dangerous point. It's true. And with now, repetition, it just makes a person... It, because even if it wasn't a mind, major sin itself, it now opens your heart to go towards what? The worst of worst. With the Alika Somalis, they have a saying, which is, uh, they say that touching, some, touching money, they say, is a stepping stone to stealing it. Like, whatever, whatever is not yours, if you just touch one a note that isn't yours, you start, you, you head that direction. And that's how it is. Everything starts at that small point. So it's the fact that we don't have that in our hearts. We don't see what we're doing, the crimes that we're doing, the sins that we're coming with, the disobedience that we're coming with. Okay, well, on that note, we'll just go for, uh, we'll just go for another break, inshallah. Join us for the final part of the show after this break. Assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome back. Ustad Rahman, you know, we touched in the last part of the, the last part of uh, before the break, we touched upon the sins. Now, what comes to mind is we know that the scholars say that we should worship Allah with fear, which hopefully what we should have covered that in the first part, not feeling safe and always trying to avoid sins, do our best, improve ourselves, be better, be better Muslims. Now, we come to the the other aspects of fear and hope. How do we balance that? Should we have more hope than fear? Should we have more fear than hope? How can we try and gain? What is the, mm -hmm. the criteria there? What, which is more important? The scholar is like Abu, uh, one of the great Imams. Uh, his name is uh, Abu Suleyman al Darani. Uh, and Al Imam Abdul Rahman uh, ibn Hassan in his Kitab Fatul Majid, he brings it, his statement in 
in the in the in the sharah that Abu Sulaiman al Darani rahimahullah he said that the person ينبغي لل ينبغي للمسلم it is required from the person while he's alive and he lives in this world that the fear is more higher than the hope that you're more scared but when the person's at his last moments in this life the thing that he should have more in is to have hope Allah is what you think of him ana inda dhanni abdi bi ذَلِكُمُ ظَنُّكُمُ الَّذِي ظَنَنْتُمْ بِرَبِّكُمْ That is what you thought of your Lord. Last moments the person comes with husn of dhan. High, you know, good hopes of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. But the course of his life, the person is scared more towards that direction. That doesn't mean there's no hope, but there's more fear than there is hope. Which makes complete sense because if you had more hope, then you can quite easily fall short because you've got so much hope that you don't act and do as much efforts and deeds as you would yes. but if you have the more fear you're always in theory going to be on your toes and going to be uh, trying to work towards what you need to work towards but those two qualities which is hope and fear the believer should have both we're not saying one should be eliminated allah tabarak wa ta'ala in many places what does he say nabbi ibadi anni ana al-ghafur ar-rahim wa anna adabi huwa al-adab al-alim allah says ghafir al-dhanbi wa qabil at-tawbi shadid al-'iqab ghafir al-dhanb and shadid al-'iqab you see um, so this concept of fear and hope to combine between the two innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat wa yad'unana raghaban wa rahaban wa kanu la la khashi'in to have hope and to have fear is is as ibn al-qayyim said that it's a bird with two wings a bird cannot fly with two without with one wing it needs two wings and the fly he said it means that the person is going to allah the bird is flying to a direction it wants to go somewhere the believer who's flying to Allah, who's trying to get to Allah Azza wa Jalla, he needs those two wings to get to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is hope and what? And fear. But whilst we're in this world, because there are so much things that make us have a lot of hope, then the person should have more fear. Like in, he did say, rahimahullah, in some situations, in some contexts, in some places, there are some people who fear is too much in their heart. When you do listen to them, you find that they've got so much fear with them. So what do you do? So what you do is you place in their heart hope and you make sure that they don't give up. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah forgives all sins. Every mistake that you've ever come with, Allah will forgive you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah also says إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَا يَشَاءُ Now these are things that should place hope in your heart. But also Remember, بَلَا مَنْ كَسَبَ سَيِّئَةً وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِيئَةُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا قَالِدُونَ The person should be scared when he reads those kind of ayat. إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ So the person is consistently on his toes, hope and fear, and he combines between the two. But if the person, one of those two uh, isn't there, then the person will definitely come with either excessive you know, hope, uh, which is not praiseworthy, or the person will come with excessive fear, which is also not praiseworthy, where the person will give up uh, in both situations. One, he would give up because he's too scared, and the other one, he's too hopeful, he will give up. He won't do what, what, what's required from him. And now when we look at the world that we're living in today, majority of, um, a lot of people are actually to have too much hope. The, most, the majority of people that you meet, they're lackadaisical. They don't care, they're relaxed, they believe there's nothing to really worry about. So they come with what is known as extreme negligence. They come with what? Extreme negligence. What well, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that the groups that went against Ahl al-Sunnah are three, three groups he mentioned in the issue of hope and fear and love, these three. He said, for example, he said the Sufi, they went towards love. And he mentioned that the Khawarij went towards fear and the Murji'a went towards hope. And it's Ahlul Sunnah combined all three. What did they do? They combined between all three. They came with hope, they came with fear, and they also came with love. All three of them came present on them. Like in all the other groups, the Murji'a, they only take the Nusus, the, the texts that talk about hope. The Khawarij, they took the verses that talk about punishment and fear. And the, the, the Sufiya, they took the verses that speak about love. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah, what did they do? They took all of the verses that speak about all three of those components. Fear, hope, and love. 
I mean, guess for the last three or four minutes, um, we can touch upon because we obviously mentioned now that we've 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 discussed the the fear and the hope. What about the love? How can we how can we how can we build? I know that itself is an episode, but just a few tips in the last three or four minutes. How can we build this love for Allah? Since it's part of the discussion, we want to end on that note. Really, how can we build this love? Definitely, the first thing that a person can increase their love for someone is the knowledge and the understanding that they have of it. Knowing someone increases your love for them. The less that you know, the less love that you have for them. And definitely the ones who love Allah Azza wa Jalla the most are those who know Allah the most, who studied Allah the most. I mean, think about it. When you didn't know about Allah wa Ta'ala or you didn't have much knowledge of Him, your love and your, 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 your desire for meeting and wanting to see Him was very less. And the more you learned about Him and the more you studied His names and attributes, the more your love increased. So what Idalik Ibn al-Qayyim says, the greatest thing that increases love in the hearts of the people towards Allah Azza wa Jalla is having to what? It's having to uh, know his names and attributes. Studying his names. Each of Allah's names has a meaning in it. Allah's names are alamun bi'atibari dalalati ala dhat and they are awsafun bi'atibari dalalati ala al-ma'ani. Allah's names, they're not just mere names. They are names that have meaning in it. And each name has a meaning that comes out of it. Ar-Rahman, there's a characteristics in there, sifatul rahma, mercy. Study that characteristics. Uh, Allah wa Taala has, uh, you know, Allah is His name. This name, Allah, has the characteristics of ilah, al ma'lu, al ma'bud, the one that's worshipped. You study that. The more you study that, the more you realize that. Well, I remember one time I was going through the name al Ghalib, uh, sorry, al Aziz, sorry, al Aziz, and when I went through al Aziz. To some group of, group of brothers, I said, "You know what Aziz means? Aziz means al ghalibu fi amrihi, the one when he wants something it will happen the way he wants it, and no one can stop it." And I remember when I explained that, and I went into examples, and I showed this name Aziz, wherever it came in the Quran, in the context that it came in, and what it meant when it came in the context of the Quran. I remember a lot of people. They said, "Just that alone itself increased my iman a lot," and Subhanallah, it re- made me realize. That everything is in the hands of Allah and it's, this is it, Al Aziz. So the reality is the person, the more he studies the names of Allah and the more he learns about Allah, the more he loves his creator, Allah Azza wa Jalla. What about from the um, from the aspects of we obviously mentioned one of the ways to increase the love for Allah is the uh, names and attributes, learning name and attributes and learning about Allah. Um, but what about, are there certain acts of worship? Are there certain practices that can also increase us in the love for Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, na'am, su'batu salihah. The righteous people that you're with, the people that you hang around with, definitely they can increase your love for Allah wa ta'ala. There are people when you go and you sit with them, they don't, they don't even need to say much. You just by being around them, sitting with them, Allah, it will increase your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your iman will increase. You, you, you can see that your iman is grown just in that gathering. And this is something Allah wa ta'ala, He uh, commanded His Prophet to do. You know, be patient with these righteous people, Muhammad. Be with them. The third thing is to be in the gatherings of, you know, and, you know where knowledge and information, Islamic religion is being taught. This also increases your just in that gathering where you see a lot of people studying and they're learning and the environment. When it came to the ayah, he said it means the halaqat where fiqh is taught. You know, the religion is being taught. That this is what is meant by So definitely seeking knowledge, being with righteous people and definitely reading about, about the biography of the righteous, pious predecessors. Uh, another thing that pops to mind, because we've still got about three or four minutes left, is that something that people either neglect or go in extremes or acts that d- don't c- confer or aren't from the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad upon him is to try and gain this love. An important aspect uh, is also making dhikr, remembrance of Allah. And we, like I said, we have some people who maybe do that by doing things that weren't from from Islam, like dancing or singing and say this is remembrance of Allah, but reality, um, remembrance of Allah 
like reading the Quran. So what what is the what is the what would you recommend for those people who say we want to get closer to Allah, we want to make a remembrance of Allah? What are the what is the best or the the the, the, the give them a few pointers, should I say, on the best ways, the correct ways to make a remembrance of Allah, which then also should increase your love for Allah. Because if you're always remembering somebody, and to Allah is the best of examples, you will also gain some attachment to them. So this is also an important aspect. So what are the main steps that they should do, or how should they make this dhikr? I personally honestly believe, uh, me especially, what I do is I read Abdurrahman Nasir Sa'adi's tafsir. Every night I have it next to my bed. Uh, I try to take every night some portion out of it, something, page or two, three or pages. And in, in months, you see us, four or five months, you finish the tafsir and you start again. Having knowledge of this Quran, it, it really bonds you with Allah Azza wa Jalla and you realize your creator. There are stories in there. There are things that took place. Allah says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ You see the Quran when it gets detached from you and you're not connected to the Quran Wallahi Allah tells us فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْعَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Your heart becomes hardened and this is where does love come from? It comes from the heart Your heart is dark and dull So not knowing the Quran and not knowing what Allah is saying because remember when I just said having to know Allah's names and attributes Allah has an attribute which is speech This is the direct relationship with Allah which is the Quran the Quran is the speech of Allah. وَإِنَّ أَحَدُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغُ مَأْمَنَةِ The Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the person, by reading the Quran, he becomes connected to Allah and without a shadow of a doubt. I've not seen anything increase my iman uh, more than the Quran. Wallahi. Jazakallah khair for coming on today, inshaAllah. Jazakallah khair. And khair. also, may Allah reward you all for tuning in. Give us some good steps there, inshaAllah, on how to not become complacent and at the same time, how to have love the fear and the hope in Allah and until next time inshallah same time same place bi'ithnillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh